the grace of the newborn Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome to worship on this Christmas Eve. As we celebrate the birth of Jesus, we welcome you. Whether you have been joining us for worship online all along or whether you are new with us tonight. From St. Paul, Minnesota to wherever you are, Christ gathers us tonight and makes us into one body through divine love. Tonight we celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion. If you haven't yet gotten a chance to gather some bread and wine or juice, we invite you to do so now as we gather around the table to celebrate this Holy Eucharist together. Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. 
Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. from Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder for the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders and the rod of their oppressor. You have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests on his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Word of God, word of life. 
Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, The shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told them. 
the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, here we are, Christmas Eve. Actually, we should probably say, here we are not. I'm standing in the sanctuary at Gloria Day, all alone, save for a camera and a couple of lights, and it just doesn't feel right at all. You are not here. I miss the dull roar of the pre-service chatter that usually fills this room as we're gathering for Christmas Eve worship. I miss seeing college students who have been gone since summer but have now returned home for the holidays. I miss the crying babies. I miss singing carols together, hearing the glorious brass accompaniment to the hymns, joining our voices in beautiful four-part harmony as we sing Silent Night by Candlelight. I miss sharing the peace, serving communion, greeting all of you after worship at the back of the church. I miss your Norwegian sweaters. <laughs> Most of all, I miss you. I know I speak for all of the pastors and staff at Gloria Day when I say, we miss you all so much. It just doesn't feel like Christmas Eve when we can't be together. 
in so many ways. For so many of us, this has turned out to be a Christmas Eve, not at all like the one we'd been hoping for. Our large family gatherings have been canceled. Most of us are gathered tonight just with our immediate families in the same homes where we've been tripping over each other for the past several months in front of the same screens that have been a source of both miraculous connection and mind-numbing exhaustion. Some of you are spending this Christmas alone. Your sense of isolation only exacerbated by the holiday. Maybe you have a Zoom meeting or two scheduled with family or friends, but we've all learned what a poor substitute that is for the physical connection we share when we're gathered together in person. Some of us are missing family members who have died since last Christmas. Heartbroken about funerals we weren't able to have, trying to process our grief all by ourselves without the hugs and tears and the gestures of consolation that we offer one another when we gather as a community. I am certain that that first Christmas was not at all what Mary and Joseph had been hoping for either. Unlike all of us who have been forced into our homes, that young couple was forced out of their homes, compelled to make a difficult journey in accordance with Caesar's decree. The Holy Family understood back then, as well as we do today, how circumstances beyond our control can thrust us into a strange and uncertain existence. Even in first century Judea, an animal stable was probably the last place any expecting mother would hope to find herself on the night when she would give birth to her child. Nevertheless, there they are. Nobody else was there to support this young mother and inexperienced father and their vulnerable baby on the night Jesus was born. Mary's own mother couldn't be there to hold her hand and offer her encouragement. It is to a poor couple, ill-prepared for the task, displaced from their home, all alone and forced to make the best of an impossible situation, that God is born. The ELCA's presiding bishop, Elizabeth Eaton, put it this way. She says, Precisely in our distress, in our dislocation, the Lord shows up. Emmanuel, God with us, makes his home in the very places we find foreign or isolating. There is no God-forsaken place, and we are never alone, not in hospital rooms or sheltering in place or on Zoom calls. God shows up. God is born in exactly those places where the situation seems most uncertain where life is most precarious, where exhaustion has worn us down, where loneliness and despair are creeping in. God is born in the places where we are most afraid. And the places where God seems farthest off, that is where God is born. God is born and a stable becomes the gateway to the divine. God is born and stinky shepherds become the first ones to hear the good news. God is born, and even in the midst of hardship, we get a glimpse of transcendent beauty. Samuel Wells, who serves as the vicar at St. Martin in the Fields in London, recalls a conversation he had with a friend several years ago. The friend asked him, what would you like written on your tombstone? What words of wisdom do you want to leave for those who come after you? 
He says he blurted out a phrase that he had never said aloud before, something that just came into his mind instantaneously. He said his tombstone should say, if it can't be happy, make it beautiful. He says he's continued to reflect on that epitaph since the day it first came to him, that this expression has become his advice for almost every occasion when friends or congregation members face profound grief, their own mortality or terrible distress. As a widower plans a funeral or a person faces another kind of loss, he invariably returns to those simple words saying, I hope that in the midst of your sorrow and the bleakness of what you're facing, you can yet find a way to make it beautiful. He goes on, making it beautiful is about realizing we're usually operating on a mundane level where things will seldom make sense and where most things are fragile and contingent. In the face of dismay, he says, the best approach is to go up a level to a realm of fittingness, recalibrated priorities, God's kingdom. Making it beautiful also addresses the powerlessness at the heart of grief. He says, there is, it turns out, something you can do. And that is to take the wisdom, grace, or soul of what's been lost and portray its transcendent quality in word, deed, or collective gesture. It strikes me that on that first Christmas, on a cold night, in a dark stable, where a displaced family took their rest on beds of hay and a teenage mother gave birth to her firstborn son, God took an impossible situation and made it beautiful. It was a miserable night that somehow, by God's grace, was so much more. Somehow, despite the grim circumstances, the young couple had an experience of divine transcendence, of unexpected glory. Shepherds, accustomed to being overlooked, were visited on a hillside by angels who told them to make haste, go to Bethlehem, and get a glimpse of the miraculous thing God is doing in a barn on the edge of town. By some great mystery, animals saw their newborn Lord lying in a manger. The situation was bleak. For Mary and Joseph, it must not have felt very happy. But God infused it with grace. God made it beautiful. So that's my prayer for you tonight, that even if it can't be happy, God would make this Christmas beautiful, that God would infuse your gathering such as it is with unexpected glory, that you would experience transcendence and wonder and deep abiding joy in the assurance that Emmanuel, God with us, is here, is there where you are, with you, born for you, making a home with you this day. Jesus Christ, a living, breathing, beautiful sign that God is never far off. Dear friends, Merry Christmas.
As we celebrate Christmas, let us praise God for the birth of our Savior and pray for all in need. Mighty and merciful God, we praise you for bringing your word to birth among us. Strengthen with your spirit all the baptized, so that even where the faithful cannot assemble for worship, the whole church can together honor the birth of Jesus. Make our celebrations beautiful. God of love, born for us, hear our prayer. We praise you for your entire creation, the stars in the sky, the animals in the stables, the flocks in the fields. Show us your majesty in the brightness of the day and the darkness of night. God of love, born for us, hear our prayer. We praise you for each day that knows peace and welcomes justice. Inspire leaders of nations to seek concord where there is war and violence. Visit both the Palestinians and the Israelis and protect the many peoples who live under military rule. Make our own streets avenues of peace. God of love, born for us, hear our prayer. We praise you for new parents, for babies, and for the joys of families of every shape and size. Console couples who struggle with infertility. Visit homes where there is sorrow or strife. Abide with people who live isolated from others. God of love, born for us, hear our prayer. We praise you for every sign of your loving presence, and we pray for all who suffer. We plead for mercy for the millions around the world infected with the coronavirus, and pray especially for our own loved ones battling COVID-19. Send your healing and hasten the distribution of the vaccines. God of love, born for us, hear our prayer. We praise you for making a home with us and pray for those who have no place to call home. Abide with those living in tent encampments across the Twin Cities. Accompany migrants, refugees, 
and asylum seekers fleeing violence in their homelands. Move policymakers to act with comp compassion and courage. God of love, born for us, hear our prayer. We praise you for all the saints who have proclaimed your glory in word and deed, especially those we remember in our hearts. With them, let us sing your praise now and forever. God of love, born for us, hear our prayer. To you, mighty God, Prince of Peace, Wonderful Counselor, we offer our prayers for your grace upon grace. Receive our prayers in the name of the one who was born to live and die and rise again for us, Jesus Christ, our newborn Savior. Amen. The peace of the newborn Christ be with you always. God's love was born into the world on this holy night. The love of God continues to be born through the ministry of Gloria Day Lutheran Church. If you would like to contribute to our mission of welcome, caring, healing, and doing justice, you can do so electronically through the link that you see on your screen. Of course, you can always mail a check to the church. More than anything, we are grateful that you're praying with us and have joined us tonight. We will gather again for worship tomorrow morning on Christmas Day at 9.30 a.m. And of course, on this upcoming Sunday at 9.30 a.m. as we continue our celebration of Christmas and sing all of our favorite Christmas carols.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. In the wonder and mystery of the Word made flesh, you have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to love the God whom we cannot see. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy God, creator of all and source of life, at the birth of time, your word brought light into the world. In the fullness of time, on your dancing day, you sent your word born of Mary to make a home among us. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. By your Spirit, bless us and this bread and cup that held and nourished by you, we may live as your children, shining with the joy of your beloved. Through Christ, all glory and honor is yours, gentle parent, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Taste and see that God is good. This is Christ's table. It is a table of love and welcome. It is a table of communion with the earth and fellowship with those who are poor. So come, you who have great faith and you who wish you had more. You are welcome, whether you have been receiving communion with us all along or whether it's been a very long time since you have. You are welcome, whether this meal is the gift of life for you or whether it is still a very strange and mysterious thing. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. At Christ's table, there are no exceptions. 
All are welcome. So I invite you who are at home with others to take the bread and to serve it to one another using the words that we use at church, the body of Christ given for you. But if you are by yourself, then take the bread that you have put out for yourself and hear these words spoken directly to you. This is the body of Christ given for you. And as you share the cup or receive it with just yourself, hear these words spoken for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Let us pray. 
In the beginning, the Word was with you, O God. The Word shines in our darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. With bread and wine, body and blood, you have been born within the manger of human life. You fill us with a peace that abounds, a justice that bends the universe, and a love that cannot fail. With each day, increase the light of your presence until every corner of this planet shines with transcendent glory, glory that is yours, now and forever. Amen. May the love that made the stars 
be your guiding light. May the love revealed in Jesus be your hope and inspiration. And may the love of the ever-present Spirit be your courage, joy, and peace, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Share the joy of this holy birth.